Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, July 21st, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 747. We're like an airplane or something. Oh, man, I just realized that. I was like, dang it, we could have done something silly with that. Uh, Yeah. But you know what they have sometimes on airplanes, especially like if you're in first class, uh, it's even better. Food. Do you know what they (laughs) don't have on those airplanes? Bathrooms for big boys. Well, that's true. (laughs) But fair food. Ah, uh, that's true. Uh-huh. They don't have fair food. Also, the irony of you playing uh, Al Yankovic when he just dropped his new Polka Mania song this weekend is wild to me. It's like nice. the universe is collab, you know, collaborating. I don't know. Uh, uh. Here we are. Yes. So uh, we did this last year. We're returning to it, right? It's 2024. It's a new year. And since uh, none of us have won the lottery with discretionary income to send all of us to the Wisconsin State Fair to try these foods in person, we're going to do it virtually. You know? Tasty. And and just think of it. Like, it's kind of like being on a diet. There's no calories. You know, we just get to look at the pictures. We learned from last year. Visuals are our friends. If you can't yeah. see it, then you know what are you gonna? What, a description is not good enough. It's a yeah. it's a medium that you want to be able to see what you're gonna put in your hole. It's kind of like right. porn, you know. So that part, one hundred percent. So, um, yeah. The wild thing is, is that Wisconsin has over a hundred new foods. So I want to set the preface. We are not reviewing all 100 new foods because that would be like a 10 part series and we're not doing that. Hallelujah. (laughs) So uh, we're going to do some of them. And these are kind of the unique items. And by that, I'm going to preface as the items that were selected are not necessarily seeming like things that we've done before. Got it. Like there was a bunch of things where I was like, oh, we kind of already talked about that, didn't we? Or it's like a slight modification or it's not a big deal. So, Mm -hmm. but when you go to our website, you will see links. You'll see links to the Wisconsin State Fair. You'll see links to each of these like described items. And there's a description, which is going to be on the blog, but it comes straight from their website. And also the lovely picture that they took um, of said food. So Mm -hmm. with that, if you are following along, I hope you have some some snacks. Yes. Did did you surprise me in telling me that I have to insert images of each of these into the blog post? Uh, no. Okay, I'm just going to do that. Good, thank you. That's okay. But you do know that, like, we're going to allow people who are watching us <laughs> to see the visuals, right? Oh, that that too, but I thought you meant it on... Anyway, never mind. No, 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 no. I was like, afraid you, you could were just... going to give me more work. I was going to be wow. a little upset. Wow. Really? <laughs> Really, producer? <clears throat> Anyways, that being said, uh, so if we're ready, why don't we dive in uh, to our selections and see what we think of them in this case? Hey, let's do it. All right. What's this? So the, a little treat? the very first thing that we have is called a beer, cheese, and brat spud muffin. 
Okay. I know, David. I know. Your face is lit. I knew I was going to get a reaction out of you. It says, with a nod to Wisconsin tradition, combine beer, cheese, and brats to create a fun take on a potato pancake, a spud mm-hmm. muffin. <laughs> the beer, cheese, and brat spud muffin features a cheesy hash brown mixture infused with beer, cheese, and bratwurst baked in a muffin pan to form this delicious snack. It doesn't look like a muffin. Looks more like an English muffin, if you're trying to okay. recognize it. Right. Like I was I was myself, I was mm-hmm. confused. I was like, yeah. okay, that's I am con um so don't get me wrong. I I I appreciate the effort. Oh but snap. I don't it's just a hash brown casserole. Right, yeah, but it's 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 more handheldy. Right, like like here's the thing. I I guess I want to ask this question: Would you eat it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, actually, I don't, I'm not. But that's because I'm not a fan of bratwurst. That's just that's a personal okay. opinion. That's fair. So this is yeah. this is remember last year when we talked about this. I came it down to cr- two criteria: Would you eat it? Would you buy it? And the right. would you buy it was kind of the dividing line because sometimes one of us would be willing to buy it and then let someone else taste it because they weren't willing to <laughs> spend the money on it. Right. But they were intrigued enough that they would actually have a bite or taste it. Right. Right. So, I mean, personally, I, would, I wouldn't eat it, but I would buy it for somebody if they wanted it. Like, uh-huh. Well, like, I'm, I feel like Jim would like this. Like, okay. this is a perfect example, I think, of something Jim would enjoy. That's fair. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, totally down for this. It is everything that my German ancestry heart is, like, like totally buying into. <laughs> I'm like, beer, cheese, brat, potato. What more could I wish for? Like, Right. So I'm like, nom, 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 nom. The, the idea of a handheld puck of, of that stuff combined together, I'm like, that that works for me. I do hear you, though, that this looks nothing like a muffin. I like. Yeah. yeah well, I, I don't think... It's... I don't understand how they did it in, in muffin pans, you know, especially with what the picture they turn out doesn't look anything right. like a muffin. And if you put it into a muffin pan, it would probably be a little more so muff- muffiny. It's... Maybe so this the, is the main muffin thing top? With the... that doesn't make any sense though. Well, well, I think it could <laughs> potentially be in a muffin pan, 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 but it doesn't have anything to rise it, so it's gonna just stay in the right. bottom of the pan. But but so. they look very flat and round, where not yes. very cup, not very cupcakey. Right. Like that's the part that kind of threw me off a little bit, and I was like, you know what? You can call it a muffin all you want, but like, I think you should have just like called it something but else. Unless these are actually smaller than I'm expecting, or about this big, or something like that. Uh, maybe Versus, mm-hmm. like this big, I right? Like I, be that big. I imagine them to be about three to four inches across based on the image, right. but that's hard yeah. to tell because we have no relational like objects <laughs> to figure out how big it is. Because <laughs> honestly, what they have in the picture looks like a griddle. Yes, what it's sitting on is a griddle. Like that's what it looks like. Yeah. So instead of a muffin pan, yeah. it's actually griddle cake, which is more along the lines of English muffin. Yeah. Which I don't know. To be fair, that's perfectly fine. But I yeah. probably mm. prefer to it more as a girl cake or something like that. Right. Okay. So our next item up, a birria egg roll. This says a celebration of Hispanic background, particularly the chef's cherished Mexican heritage. This unique beef birria blends bold Mexican spices with a subtle Asian twist. Then deep fried for a delicious crispy egg roll shell accompanied by a flavorful dipping consomme beef birria broth with a sprinkle of cilantro, onion, and limes on the side. Yeah. That's a yeah. guess for you, David? Yeah. I love egg rolls, like, in general. And um, 
this kind of spin is I'm I'm all for. It might be a little spicy, which I'm kind of okay with. It's just a little spicy, but not too spicy. And then, but the consomme I think sounds really good too. So I'm I I'm all I will I will eat this and I will buy this. What do you think, Joe? Works. <laughs> and it's yeah, I mean, I I will say this: it's not technically that original. No. It's an egg roll, and I'm not trying to diminish that, but anything can be in a fucking egg roll these days. <laughs> so, how many places put birria into an egg roll? Correct. That's the part where I was like, oh, this is different, but yeah. it's not that extravagantly wild as a new invention. But correct. yes, if I was walking through the fair and I saw this, I'd probably be like, how much? How many do I get? <laughs> Like, like, and it kind of looks like you get a couple. So I'd be like, oh, this is a splitting thing because right. like the, the concept of eating at the fair is about like tasting things. So I know I don't want to fill up on a particular thing. So, yeah. right. well, I, and I don't think these are too big looking at the dipping cup because those things are like this big, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and if the egg roll is about this big, it's, it's not that big. I don't think. Yeah, I would not say that these are girthy boys. They're, you know, reasonable. <laughs> I've moved ahead. Sorry, I've moved ahead. Okay. Well, then let's do that. Because uh, I also agree. I would I would buy it and I would also eat it. Um, next up is Burnt Ends Bonanza. And this one says, satisfy your hankering for some good old country fictions with the Burnt Ends Bonanza. This dish... I lost my <laughs> sorry, I lost my cursor. This dish serves crisp and crackling burnt end pork butt on a bed of hearty tater tots. All this goodness is topped with Wisconsin beer cheese, chopped scallions, a drizzle of quote unquote kickin bourbon sauce, and a side of sour cream. What's not to love? I mean, first of all, you had me at tots. T- yep. tots, tots, tots is love for me so like, you know <laughs> i i heart tots and yeah. i i hearted tots before glee made that a thing so right. like um yeah i was like oh a yeah. pile of, of crispy tots with a bunch of stuff on it yeah. yeah yeah and and i always i always have uh, uh one of the way, ways to my heart is uh fatty foods with a bunch of starchy foods mixed in Basically, if it's potatoes and meat, you probably have sold me. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. This is so, this is this is a fun little thing. I I would probably like this would not be I would not eat this on my own. This would definitely be a shared, like because it looks like a pretty decent portion, but this would be like a split, maybe two or three. Um. It, it looks really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eat it, buy it. And, and, in my and, mouth. and especially with the Wisconsin beer cheese. Oh, meat, cheese, exactly. potatoes. Oh, you're just like, check, 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 check. Yep. Okay. So <laughs> let's jump over to a beverage. Okay. Uh, this is coffee. Water. Right. This is coffee creme brulee milk tea. Right. Okay. It says okay. indulge in the creamy decadence of the coffee creme brulee milk tea. This drink blends the rich caramelized flavor of a creme brulee with the comforting taste of milk tea. Dive into a world of creamy sweetness and velvety smoothness with each tantalizing cup. Now, what they don't really continue on to, to explain is in the picture that they're showing, it's like boba. Like, there's bubble pearls towards the bottom of the cup. Right. So, I'm very intrigued. I'm not a huge coffee drinker, but I am kind of a sucker for a flavored coffee thing. Okay, it's like a coffee that- flavor something? Yeah, like, you know, something that might have, um, you know, 
that covers like up a, the bitterness of coffee, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like a like a um, like a coffee ice cream. Yes. Right. Um, Jeff, I would not buy this. Okay. I, would, I mean, I would try it just to see what it's like, and maybe based off of that, I would buy it if I if it was really really tasty or something, but. I don't know. Just milk tea doesn't do it for me. The flavor of coffee creme brulee, sure, but milk tea. I think that's kind of the. If I was walking by and saw it and looked at it and was like, mm, no, thank you, and I would just move on. Like I don't really have right. a, a. It doesn't give me the urge to buy it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Uh, it is available yeah. at Bubble Tea and Waffles, so. That might be one of the reasons. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm, I don't think I would buy it. I would try it. I'm kind of feeling, Jeff, like I don't normally do bubble tea or milk tea. I haven't done it in the past. Not saying I, I am averse to it. I just have never really had a major opportunity or major like grab for doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Flavor combination sounds good. I don't know how I feel about coffee and creme brulee. That might be an interesting blend. And looking at this picture, it's hard for me to see like how blended it is. Right. So I, I'm 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 uncertain. But yeah. So what I'm hearing is <clears throat> I'll buy it. And then each each of us will try it, and we'll see, we'll see where that lands us if we care for it or not. There we go. That's Pretty, the idea. Because it's I, very I'm experimental. I think Ray. he's he's like eh, eh. yeah. And but I'm for the fla flavor crumbly. It's the milk tea part, which I think is what's the turn off for me. Yeah. Or the yeah. or the not turned on. I'm not going to say turn off. Right. Right. It's just doesn't attract me right that's, fair. that's very fair okay so with that being said let's move into a, the frankenstein area of the food fair because you know they can't help themselves but do this kind of stuff what the fuck is this so this is called the cool ranch doritos pickle and it goes on to explain in this case, it says, bite into the Cool Ranch Doritos pickle. This large dill pickle is spiral cut on a stick, rolled into crushed up Cool Ranch Doritos, and you guessed it, deep fried. Served up with ranch dressing for dipping, and you'll be set for a delicious day. I'd get one. Get one. So here's, here's the, I think, the make or break. If, whether or not you like a dill pickle. I like dill pickle. Because yeah. if you don't like dill pickle, then this is a pass. But if you're okay, if you're if you're okay to, to get down with dill, then like this this you may be interested in. Uh, Damon, <laughs> I don't know, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the sweet pickle, so I like the dill pickles. Uh, I mean, See, do you I... like? Here's the thing: is have you ever tried just fried pickles? Yes, I've had like pickle like pickle chips. Yeah, I've yeah. had I've had okay. like fried pickle. Yeah, so this I'm is, not like that's kind of yeah. Yeah, it's that, just like fried chicken. You can fry chicken with with chips. In this case, Doritos. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like I don't. Hmm. I think I would give it a try. I don't think I could eat this whole fucking thing though. That part, because for me, pickle is. A, Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll buy it. I'll, a... I'll, I'll, I'll break you off a small portion and then I'll have the rest. There you go. See, I'll have like, like, give me like three, like the top three, and then you can have the rest and we're good. Well, like, well, there well, we go. It's, it's, it's spiral cut, so it's one long. Well, you know. Well, but... you know what I mean. Like, yeah, you just you have to off. take a knife and cut it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywho. I'll break it off. I just, yeah. I, yeah, I would give this a try. I would give it a try. I would give it a try. I don't know, because pickle, it, it, 
the flavor combination is reading very salty mm -hmm. to me. And that's where I kind of would be like, hmm. Because if it got too salty, then I'd have to have something to drink. And yeah. So I would definitely get this and try it. Um, but I feel like this is an incomplete dish. I feel like I should be also sold as a combo a Mountain Dew flavor and or Baja Blast slushy type concoction to go with it <laughs> to like appease my gamer like like you know desires you know to bring it all yeah. home just saying right no 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 come on that's very stereotypical it may be very stereotypical, like stereotypical but game, so. how dare you just because I don't stream on Twitch doesn't mean I don't play with a joystick. That's just that's kind of offensive. That's not the type of joystick that we're referring to. <laughs> wow. I Moving on. Game theory. <laughs> Lightly. Anyways. So so we got we got two buys and a try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this might be a little bit more up your alley. We're gonna stay in the deep fried zone. How about deep fried lemonade bites? This is interesting. So it, and I yeah, was totally, so it, oh yeah, these look delicious. Um, but they, so it, they're like donut fried is what they're looking like. Yeah, it says nothing is better than a refreshing ice cold lemonade break on a hot summer day. Take it up, take it up a fair notch. <laughs> That's horrible. With a sip, quote unquote, of these deep fried lemonade bites made from Hawaiian sweet rolls, dipped in a French toast batter. A homemade lemon curd filling, deep fried to golden perfection, and tossed in a lemon sugar with a drizzling of icing. See, that's where we go with this. Because it, is, <laughs> it, is, it is not lemonade. It is not deep fried lemonade. It is deep fried lemon curd. So, like, like that's like when you when you say lemonade, and I'm like, how the fuck are you? Deep frying lemonade, you, you and then I look at the picture. You into a battery and you fry it. But it, then it, it's water; it becomes water because it melts. But anyway, that's not beside the point. That's so not what, what I this hear is. is what I hear is Damon's gonna buy it and he's gonna eat it, but he's gonna critique the business the entire time while he's there doing it and be like, "Y'all need to rename this." Yes, it it's is not a lemonade, lemonade curd. It's, it's lemonade cur lemon it's lemon curd. curd. It's not a lemon curd, it's a lemonade curd. <laughs> okay. I, sure. I applaud this effort. I'm like... I do too. Hawaiian sweet rolls, check. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. they're, they're already a sweet bread. And then French toast batter, check. Homemade mm -hmm. lemonade curd filling, that's like a double check because if it's really homemade and not, you know, processed or whatever... Mm -hmm. You know, and then deep fried to gold of perfection. Oh, and then we're going to toss it in lemon sugar and add a drizzle of icing. Like, okay, um, great. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm yeah. on the diabetes medication already. So, right, right. And again, it's like looking at the picture. I like. I would. I would eat this. I. I know I would. The idea behind it is sound. I'm just not a fan of the name. That's just me personally. Right. No, I think. I think that's fair. No pun intended. Um, as, as, as far as it goes, I'm like, yes, this is definitely a dessert thing that I would probably get when I'm at the fair. Um, right. now I would probably buy it and then I would taste it. And then at that moment I would decide, decide whether or not I'm going to share this with anybody, because if it's that damn good, like y'all on your fucking own, like I, I am not like going <laughs> to yeah. be, yeah, Don't worry, I'll, I'll buy my own portion. <laughs> yeah. Like I could see. Yeah, this would be something I would share like with Jim because I know Jim likes lemon, so lemon stuff. So that would be a definite and easy shareable thing. It's like you guys so have been together for over 20 years or something. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's swing back to the dill pickle craze thing. In case you can't tell, that's kind of one of the flavors of the year, I think, at the fairs. We have the dill pickle poutine. So are you crazy about pickles? Get ready for the dill pickle poutine. These crispy cut French fries are topped with a handful of Wisconsin cheese curds, 
loaded with dill pickle chips and smothered in a homemade creamy dill sauce. This item is inspired to provide a gluten-free alternative to pickle lovers. Huh. Huh. Hmm. It's a yes for me because there's nothing about this I don't dislike. I will, I will say say this. It's a yes for me. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be the one that critiques this. Um, that's not poutine. Yeah. That's yeah, fair. That's not poutine. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, yeah. they, they, they were, they got the fries. They got the cheese curds. Mm-hmm. But the sauce... Well, appropriate, I think, for the dish is not brown gravy. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not poutine. It's it's pickles and fries and cheese curds, right? I, I, so it's, yes. it's more of about the language, not about what it is, because it looks delicious. So, if they just called it dill pickle fries, I would be perfectly happy. Or loaded dill pickle fries or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I I agree. I hear I hear you on that front. I feel like the upside is um they're kind of playing on the whole poutine rate like craze or mm-hmm. uh, craze. I was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> so like I agree. Like there's a part of me that's wondering how you could have made the gravy. I'm like, well, maybe if you did it with a vegetable stock and put dill in it and then you figured out like but i agree like the picture is part of the problem i think also because it looks like it's a squeeze bottle of cream dill sauce that they just you know they just kind of drizzle over the top and and so it's not really coming across as a gravy and i get why they went with the sauce as opposed to the gravy because it's supposed to be gluten-free and gravy usually has flour in it right yeah so i mean there's there's ways to get around it, but yeah, yeah, I think they're 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 kind of focusing on the common palette as opposed to like trying to make something specific for yeah those that are yeah it, it's a, it's a no for me by the way I'm I'm not that crazy about pickles okay I like pickles but that that looking at a picture I was like that's that's too much that's that's, too that's much. pickle forward yeah. Um, Pickle with a side of fries. No, no, no. <laughs> and I like pickles. I just don't like a lot of pickle. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's very fair. All right. So uh, we're going to step away from pickles. And the next thing I'm intrigued by this, I don't know if this is necessarily original um, conceptually, but Elote corn ribs. So it says, take the Midwest staple of corn on the cob, but add a little spice. The the elote corn ribs are made from corn on the cob with the cob acting as the bone of the corn rib tossed in hickory smoked batter and deep fried. Dusted with cojita cheese, these ribs will be served over a bed of crisp kettle chips with a side of homemade elote dip and a lime wedge on the side. Oh. So, I think the picture looks appetizing. I haven't been able to wrap my brain around whether or not you eat the whole thing. You no, don't. I don't think you eat the whole thing. Like, like ribs, you eat off the bone, just like okay. you do essentially corn anyways. But but the picture's but a, a little. Isn't elote essentially corn on the cob with toppings? Yes. 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 But this I mean, happens that's a bad to be... description of it. But you get what yeah, I mean. Yeah. But but this one is yeah. battered and fried. Yeah. Right. And and they're cut down into like quarters, I think, instead of like the whole corn on the cob. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what's confusing me is like if you're not looking close uh, enough at the picture, so they, they, it, they take the whole corn in the cob and like cut it into quarters. And then yeah, right, like, like they have it and then they have each half. Um, right. okay. And and by that, for those that don't know, because if they're listening, we're talking about they cut it lengthwise. Yes. 
Right. And then lengthwise, like they took each half and cut it. So, yeah, like, it, but if you look at it quickly, you're kind of like, oh, it looks like potato wedges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but, that's why I was like, do you eat the whole thing? Like, that's was the part that kind of stumbled. It would me. be it would be a bit much for me personally. I'm not I, I, I it's a no. I'll just go ahead and say it. It's a no. The flavor concept is interesting to me. I, I think the idea of a lote is is great, but I'm with Gary on the the execution. Mm-hmm. Like this rib with most of it sort of like the the corn the cob portion kind of covered with the batter. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a difficult like to gauge where the cob you know go where the cob starts or ends and the corn is and and i'd rather not deal with like eating like cob i don't think it's bad for you but i it it could be a little you know difficult to eat uh, i think the one of the problems is with this is the fact the corn will only be along one edge right so well, like on a rib, the meat is all over the rib. Right. right. This, the corn is only on part of it, and the rest is just the batter. Which the yeah. batter might be absolutely tasty and everything, but yeah, I think that's going to give a, a little awkward thing. I would definitely mm-hmm. put this in the try bucket. But it would definitely. <laughs> this isn't something that I would actually go ahead and and, and buy. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of on the side of like if someone else bought it, I'd be willing to try it, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up critiquing it. Yeah. Cuz what I'm thinking is like I just recently had bought a elote style corn dip to have with chips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like and that was pretty good. So if you could figure out how to make a really good dip and have fresh made chips to go with it, I might be much more interested in that, but I but there's nothing novel or different necessarily about that. So right. oh, I don't know what you do yeah, with that. Kroger has like Kroger has a really awesome um, Mexican street corn dip. Yeah. It's really good, but it's a sour cream base. Anyway, yeah. So uh, I don't think this one's a winner necessarily, but you know, I could be I could be impressed. You know, right. surprised. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, so I now we're going to... I know, we're is... going... So we're going to indulgence. Um, this one is called the Elvis mm-hmm. Nachos. <laughs> so it says, bringing back a blast from the past in the form of the shareable sweet and salty boat full of love. The Elvis Nachos feature homemade peanut butter banana sauce over Slim's Famous deep fried potato chips and topped with chopped peanuts, chopped banana chips, and crumbled bacon that you can't help falling in love with. Uh, my problem here is the banana chips, and I would prefer not to have the peanuts. I'm just not a peanut fan. I like okay. peanut butter, but so the peanut the peanut butter banana sauce sounds delicious. The chopped peanuts and the chopped banana chips. Uh, I'm just not a fan of banana chips. Fair. Yeah. <clears throat> Everything else seems okay. This is a eh. And by the way, Slim's famous means the 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 place that serves this is Slim Slim McGinn's Irish pub. Right. right. They make so, they make potato chips. Mm. Fresh. That's what they're known for. Yeah. So Damon. Yeah, I could probably. Yeah, they would probably like if I asked for about the potato, the peanuts, or the banana chips. I'm sure they'd be willing to accommodate. Right. I'm sure you could, and that's where I'm. I'm. I would. Mm, I would try this. I don't know if I would buy this. No, no, I would buy this. I would buy this. I, I would. I would buy it if. With the caveat of if they would drop the peanuts and, and banana chips. One, I'm just not trying right. to peanuts. Peanuts on on here is perfectly understandable and, and things. Banana chips just. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fair. Like, I, 
because I can I can only stand banana chips so much. Like there's a point where I'm like, okay, stop. Um, but uh, this I could mm, I can get behind it. I think I I would buy it. I think this would definitely be shared. This would not be me eating this by myself. This would definitely be like two or three or four people trying this, eating this because there's a lot of flavor going on here. Mm -hmm. and I think this is about a hand sized boat I don't think yeah. it's a really big boat at all I think this is just well, a nice little hand, hand boat but it did say shareable so it, it's possible that it's bigger than a hand size or it's just or very it, rich uh, uh, well alright so to the rich point here's how I feel about it would I buy it? probably I would definitely try it however I would probably be one of those people and I would watch as it's being made and see the ones that people are ordering in front of me. And based on this picture, I would be like, hey, can I get like double bacon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I would go along with be, that, but minus because I want more of that savory saltiness. Mm -hmm. Because. Right, because like, well, the famous deep fried potato chips add like a savory element and there's like maybe some saltiness to it. Like, I just feel like that that peanut butter banana sauce is going to probably be pretty sweet. Um, And so I'm like, mm, I feel like I need more. I think I, need, I feel like I need more like umami kind of balance. That's the only thing about it that I might be that person who would be like, you know. I'll pay extra if I can have like double bacon, you know, on it and then, you know, see right. how that goes. I don't know. That's just, that's, yeah. I'm also like, one, I, one who sometimes likes to try things the way they were originally intended for the most part. Um, just to be like, Hey, how does this work? How does the balance work? And then if I go back, depending on how I like it, if I go back, right. I would then do the more customizations where, like, yeah, I wouldn't initially go with the double bacon. I would drop the peanuts and banana chips just because of own personal preferences. But uh, I do like the idea of, of double bacon. Yeah. So what I'm hearing makes is everything better. Damon buys it as is. Jeff and I try his. Jeff gets his modified version, and I see whether or not I want to get my modified version. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Compromise. They do say it's terrible, so. Yeah, that's why I right. think it. I think it. I think it'll be. That's why I'm kind of on leaning on like I would get this because to me, again, this looks this looked very rich, mm -hmm. and I don't think I would get through a third of it. On my own. Right. No, I, I think that's fair. It's outside the box. Indeed. It is intriguing. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, oh, uh, good as, Lord, what is as we wrap up part as we wrap up part one of the State Fair series this year, this is funnel cake root beer battered cheese curds. And the description says exactly what they sound like. White cheddar cheese curds covered in funnel cake root beer batter, deep fried, and topped with powdered sugar. Yum. So these yeah. are squares mm -hmm. of like the, the 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 shape kind of throws me a little bit because curds are usually randomly shaped, just saying. Um so like they've done something that we have like apparently squares bricks whatever you want to call them of curd and then they they dip them in the root beer flavored funnel cake batter i think is what that is really saying it might not be root beer flavored um root beer would be like um like adding coke to a cake batter so it kind of give it that okay that frothy like frothy that's not the word i'm looking for it it would be more like a uh uh 
I want to say something so inappropriate right now. <laughs> well, no, it, 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 would, it would give it a root beer flavor, much that beer gives beer, regular beer batter flavor. Yeah. Right. Um, right, right, right. So not like very, necessarily very straightforward. Right. Or, or flavor That's... forward of it. So it's a little more subtle, but still it'll be there it'll uh, be there especially... i'm gonna say initially here is uh a pass with the caveat of i would try but i don't think i'm gonna like this like it's mm. it's, it's unique enough that i would i would try it but <laughs> cheese has very few places where sweet works with it in my own opinion Hmm. that's fair yeah ah. cheese cheese curd is is kind of i think the the clincher for people on the like whether or not they're really willing to try it because cheese right. curd is tangy slash salty right so this is not cream cheese right you know um yeah, yeah. i would I would probably buy this and try it and, and eat it. I think I think I would. Um, the idea intrigued me. Um, I was a little shocked, I will admit, because the, the root beer part of it, I was like, how is that working? And then I read it and I'm like, okay, it's in the batter. It's mixed with the batter. And it's right. just all, like, all together. Okay, that makes sense. I agree with you, Jeff, that I'm I'm not sure if the cheese curd and this flavor combination is gonna like mesh well, but I am tempted to give it a try. I am very tempted to give it a try. Because yeah, I love funnel like, cake. This is like low end of try. Yeah. <laughs> so I, here's I, here's the upside, ahead. I think, for you, Damon. If you buy it, according to this image, there are nine portions. Like there's nine, there's these nine nuggets, right? Or cubes. So mm -hmm. in theory, you could divide it evenly amongst the three of us and, and th each of us could have three bites. Mm -hmm. Although it sounds like Jeff's not willing to go that far. He might have one bite. <laughs> like, and, that, and that's <laughs> going to go with it. And, and another thing that's, that's a little bit against it, just a little, um, is I don't like funnel cake. Ah, okay, that's fair. Uh, so the, that's, fair. that's another thing that's going to put it down for me is is I'm thinking the batter's not going to be up to my taste yeah. as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, the rip beer I don't really care about. That's that's fine. It's still funnel so you've cake, and that has it. And, it, and the funnel cake batter has a specific texture to it. Um, yes. So it's probably I... more about texture than taste necessarily. Um, I don't know, but because this isn't the normal funnel cake form of basically the reason why it's called funnel cake, where it's like just somebody right. just dripping batter into a fry thing, um, because this is more like an actual cake or, or uh, a cake sort of method um, of cooking it or shaping it. It might be a little bit different of a te texture, so that, but it's still funnel cake batter, so yeah, not necessarily gonna be. Yeah, it's low end of try. I will try it once. I just don't expect that I'm gonna like it. That's fair. I I feel like I want to try it, but I also feel like I have already have an idea how I want to change it. <laughs> Maybe. Well, because the cheese, no, because the cheese curd thing, I think is the, is the, is the, uh, like the hindrance. So I'm like, well, what if it was like cubes of cream cheese? And what if it came with a root beer dipping sauce? Mm. 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 Like, like I'm trying to like make it a little bit sweeter, like not quite as like possibly safe yeah. and, and like, you know have yeah. fun with like it. I don't if, the, know. if the yeah. batter was more of like a donut batter because strangely enough like donuts work a little bit better for sa with savory options right in my opinion mm -hmm. um, well so yeah. i i think that might might work a little bit better in its favor but still yeah 
Uh, especially the powdered sugar on top. I think the powdered sugar is because they're trying to go along the lines of funnel cake. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. No, no, that's not going to work. That would not be a good idea. No. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking because I'm I'm going I'm going the root beer route, and I'm thinking like a root beer float, and I'm thinking ice cream. Ooh. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do but, not like cake and ice cream together. So. So this there's a difference. I, between I like this them kind of like cake. having them in together, but not like especially Mixed. on a plate. Don't don't mix yeah. it. I'm just think, I'm I'm thinking I'm going the. Essentially, I'm going to deep fried ice cream round mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a way. Like, right. That's where I'm going with it. Like the root beer, the root beer funnel cake batter covering, like, vanilla, like a vanilla ice cream cube, mm -hmm. fried. Maybe not deep fried because that would be a little much, but like, just kind of fried in a pan or whatever, or maybe even deep fried potentially, but. Anyway, that's me going like in that direction. I don't right. know if it will be a thing, but if anyone takes that idea, I would like my royalties, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the upside is that was just some of the foods that are out there uh, of the hundred new ones that uh, from the food fair. More to come. There will be a part two. We'll be yeah. revisiting Wisconsin and trying some of the other uh, items that they dish up. But that's a tasting of it. Some savory, some sweet. There's a, at least a beverage. Um, you know, we've, we've got some variety. Yeah, it started off strong, I, I would say. Yeah, I know. As we got, and I was like, oh, hmm, that's unfortunate. <laughs> like, we, we kind of feel like we ended on a, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like, mm. not super impressive. But if anything, the beer, beer cheese and brats. Blood muffin. I want you in my belly. Oh. But that's the end of this part one of this. We will be back again. Oh, why am I looking up there? The cameras were there. <laughs> but there are plenty of ways to contact us. Which of these foods did you like? Check out our website, find the links. Um, you got the link to, to the Wisconsin State Fair. So even in the meantime, you can look at the state, the Wisconsin State Fair website and maybe predict what we're going to be talking about next week. Huh? Uh, plenty of ways to put in your predictions and let us know what you think of these foods. Uh, you can pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com, where you'll find the link, links to all of these different delicious dishes. Mostly. They're not all delicious, but looking but you know <laughs> i don't want to yuck your yum but you might think it's more delicious than i do anyways you can comment on our blog shoot us an email it comes out live at, at gmail.com leave us a voicemail flex your relevance at 361 cl talk that's 361-265-8255 yeah what are you going to do with this food if you don't get food you can also comment on our social media Presence on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage chat. Lee slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're planning on recording these shows at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrement from our Zazzle store at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, such as Consent is My Four Blake, just a regular uh, Cubs Out Loud logo shirt. You see, you can get them in different styles, such as sleeveless. This is a little too big for me, but hey. It's comfy. That's all I care about. Uh, and we got new styles. Remember when I, I said whatever the Cubs say these days? Well, we got shirts about that. Maybe you are a Cub and want to say whatever the daddy say these days. Well, we got one. We got a whole bunch of ones. Check it out there. Um, also, we have a few of uh, our specialist series. Currently, we have the hugging, the belly rubbing, and the kissing specialist. What type of specialist are you? You can find all that on our, our merch store at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of the designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at keepoblick.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Please support him. He's been great for us. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or send us a donation at pbell.me slash comes out loud. 
Uh, you can find us on all the podcasting platforms. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set Box Puppy Box Cub Box Cubby uh, Box something or other. Damien. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most fair related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is not safe for work. Or you can find me as Pup Umbra 79 on Blue Sky. That is also not safe for work. But the safe for work shit, you want to go to DMA Gamer 79 on TikTok and Twitter. Gary? If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.